uh, now we're going to talk uh, about one, another one of the faders. Uh, this one is called the bleeding fader. Doesn't need to make sense. I'm going to explain it now. Okay. So, bleed is uh, a is a term that we use in LARP. I think it's good to know that it doesn't actually, it sounds like it's about blood, like I stab myself in the heart and then I bleed on the floor. Bleed is a term for, for instance, when you have um, a fabric like this and when it get wet, gets wet, the color bleeds into something else, for instance. So it's not just about blood, it's about things that are, are become messy and run into each other. So when emotions and experiences of the player, of me, travel somehow into the fiction of the LARP, and or <laughs> affect the player's experience of LARP events, we call that bleed. Um, so it could be, for instance, uh, that uh, emotions that I have um, about, uh, about having been bullied in school, for instance, uh, they, I bring those with me, even though my character maybe isn't anything about bullying, or maybe it is, but I bring that in, into the fiction, and then if there's a bullying situation inside the fiction, that affects my experience of that story. You see what I mean? So that story, my, if somebody else had played it and they have a different background, they would experience the exact same story slightly differently. And I maybe experience it stronger and that's why my life gives me bleed. But maybe it's also maybe I'm in, in love with Ireland here and I am, he doesn't know. And I'm in, in the game, uh, I'm in love with his character my character suddenly, surprisingly, falls in love with his character, then maybe my real emotions are bleeding into the fiction also, right? Or when the experiences and emotions of the LARP, like maybe we played a couple in the LARP, Alan and I, and we didn't actually even know each other, but afterwards I'm like, oh my god, that guy is the best guy in the world. So I, my fictional emotion travels out of the LARP. That's, this is pretty common, by the way. I, same advice as with the divorce yesterday. Wait two weeks and see if you still <laughs> like that person. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and, and affect the player in positive or negative ways. That is also bleed. And the first half we call bleed in, and the second half we call bleed out. So bleed in is when the emotions and experiences of the player travel into the fiction of the LARP and or affect their experience of the LARP event. And this fader, when you make LARPs, the bleed in fader, it measures how much this happens on purpose. Because of course you can use, in a way, you can use this as a design tool when you make your LARP, if you want, if you want to, uh, you can make the LARP more relevant, personally, immediately relevant to the players by giving them characters inside the fiction that are in some way close to themselves. If you want to make a LARP where people uh, play that they're in love with people they're in love with in real life, that's probably a bad idea. But I'm going to explain now that this can be used, this, this idea can, this can be used in many different ways. And, of course, the other end of the fader is that you do the opposite. You make sure that nothing about the character is similar to the player. Okay. Um, but be, before we talk about this, I think it's good to think a little bit about what is a person. Because if we need to, to play another kind of person than ourselves, it's good to think about what we are. So I have... I think I have a personality. I'm not sure that it even exists, but, but I have my life and my experiences and everything I have been through for the last 37 years. All, and all of these experiences, it's very good. Gold star, thank you. So all of my experiences of my life and all of the relationships that I have had and every job I have had and everything, everything that's ever happened to me has shaped me. And all of the people that I interact with every day also shape me. I experience that I have a personality, I have a character in my real life, what I'm like. And I also have social roles. So right now I'm a teacher and I'm doing certain things and I'm speaking in a certain way. But I'm also a sibling and an ex-stepmother and a friend and a professional and a customer. Do you see what I mean? So I have different roles in my daily life where my character behaves in different ways. And in role-playing, often we try to portray another character, another kind of personality. So actually, maybe role-playing should be called character-playing. But it isn't. For historical reasons, it's called character. Uh, but I think it's good, when we're thinking about this specific fader, 
uh, to introduce these terms, and you don't need to learn this, but it's a useful thinking, thinking tool. So when we are LARPing, there are players and characters, but also in a way roles inside the fiction. So the player is the real person who, is, who goes to this LARP to participate, and the character is the fictional persona whose background and situation and relationships and, and goals uh, the player is acting through. It takes on this other character and pretends to be another person. And then that character actually also has different roles at the same time inside the fiction, not always. In a short game, maybe you're only the mother if you're playing Anderson. You don't need to know that that person is also a, a lawyer and a vampire and some other things. But it's possible in a slightly longer game that this, that this same character is acting in these different roles, but it's still the same character, right? Uh, and when we say, this is my character for the LARP, the roles of that character are sort of included, right? But of course, well, okay, I'll, yeah. It's, uh, when we say the character, what we mean is the fictional person, all the aspects of the fictional person that I play in this LARP. <coughs> so when we LARP, the player provides the body, more or less. The body of the character doesn't have to look the same as the body of the player. You may imagine, I mean, for, in, for instance, if a woman was playing the father in Anderson, you imagine perhaps what that person looked like. Right? There's another fader that says, do you have to wear a beard or can you just pretend that that person has a beard? Yeah, that's another fader. But the, the body, in some way, the body of the player is the body of the character and the inside. It's my heart that's beating inside this character. Okay? And then we have the character, the fictional character, and that kind of gives me the psychology when I play. The personality that, that directs me as a player, how do I choose? How would this person act? Well, this person is shy and desperate and loyal and talkative and hungry, so probably she would do this in this situation. And then when I role play, I do that thing that seems reasonable for that character. And then the roles of that character, uh, the, the kinds of situation that that character is in in the LARP and who that person is uh, in that situation, also directs what kind of agency, this means what can I do in this situation, what kinds of activity, act, um, activities are available to this character. Maybe, my, maybe I'm playing a character who is a king and also a husband, and sometimes I'm speaking in my king voice and I can do almost anything, but when I'm alone with the queen and she doesn't like me, then I'm her husband and then I am limited in some ways. And I can decide everything in the universe in this LARP except what my wife thinks of me. Or maybe I'm a peasant in this LARP and I'm the lover of the queen. And I have no power in certain situations, but when I'm with the queen I have a lot of power. Right. Okay. Um, so all of these aspects are actually things that can bleed. You could design a character that looks exactly like my body but has a completely different uh, character and completely different uh, personality and situation and, and opportunities. And that's actually a very common way. Often in Nordic LARP we say, okay, this car what you see, that's how my character looks. And if I run fast or slow, that's how fast my character can run. That's one way of bringing the character into the game. Another one is saying, okay, the character is actually pretty much like me. Actually, the character even has my name, but it's, it has a completely different situation and a completely different roles and relationships. Or you can say, um, the character is maybe not at all like me. It has a completely different personality, but it is placed in some situations. Maybe it's working in an office and in my real life I'm also working in an office. And then I'm bringing some of my real life experiences and knowledge of the being an office worker into the LARP, even though I'm, I'm giving those experiences to this other character. And all of these are ways of bringing the player into the fiction. So what we are, when we're talking about the bleed-in fader, we are asking how similar is the character to the player, and that question consists of a number of smaller questions. How much does the character look like me, the player? How much does the character have my name, my personal background, my values, my priorities, my goals? How much the character has my relationship, have my relationships and my social roles? And then of course you could ask the final question, does my character have my exact life? And to that, I think the answer is always no, because if I'm playing, Jaco is shaking his head over there, but I think if, but for the purposes of this discussion, let's just say that if I'm playing a character who is exactly like me in every way and has exactly my life and exactly my relationships and also 
exactly what's going on in my life is going on in this LARP. How is it the LARP? Then you're like, ah, but we're going to change. You and you and you are going to play characters and I don't even know. And then it could be a LARP. Maybe. I think that you have to be aware that you're playing for once this LARP. But okay, if I said I'm going to play this LARP where I don't know what's fictional and what's real, maybe. Borderline case. That could be possible. But I would argue that then actually I'm not li living my then it's not exactly the life that I would have had without that LARP. Do you see what I mean? So then I think that actually the answer to the last question uh, is still no. <laughs> okay. When we are playing a character that is uh, like us in some way, what we call this is close to home. We're, we're bringing it very close to where we are uh, ourselves. And often we're talking about this because it's emotionally more powerful. So. If you want to give your players characters that have aspects of them, of the, of the players themselves, that would require you to know who your characters are, who your players are. And you don't always know who your players will be when you make a LARP. So if you want to do this, probably you need to ask the players to, for some things about their life that they can bring to the character. So very often you're going to design a process where the characters, where the players and the, and the you make the characters together and then you maybe ask them well could you take the worst moment of your life and then we're going to develop the character somehow out of the worst moment of your life or we're going to to um, to base the it's per, this character's relationship on your most recent relationship and if you're asking the players to collaborate this is i think good from a safety perspective because it allows them also to say stop no i don't want to do that um, so what would it be to be close to home? Totally close to home, playing myself in a slightly or very different situation. That would be very close to home. Totally close to home. Very close to home, playing somebody who is very similar to me in all ways, but in a LARP, in a different situation. And normally when we say playing close to home, we mean I play a character who is similar to me in some important way. Maybe this person has, I don't know, like a recent breakup, or maybe uh, the person has the same sexual orientation than me, or something like that. And that could make it very feel very personal, even though many other things in the game are different. Uh, my body, my ethnicity, my skin tone, height, weight, shape, ability, voice, gender, and sexuality, all of these things carry meaning in my real life. And they can also have meaning in your LARP. There is a LARP uh, that's a whole different conversation, but there is a LARP that is about bullying, where one of the rules is that the fattest male player plays the victim of, of bullying in this game. Uh, this is, uh, you, you should be very advanced in your design before you try to do something like that, because that is not entirely psychological or sort of emotionally safe, I feel. Uh, but it's possible to use this as a design tool. But of course also my job, work environment and love life and all of this stuff affects me and we can bring qualities from this character uh, uh, to the players. And the opposite of this then is differentiated. Maybe I want to play, maybe I want to make sure that my characters are nothing like themselves, the, the players. So maybe I give them a, the six-legged lion who is cowardly and rude and a little stupid, who wants to have an artistic career in a space civilization whose planet is collapsing. This could be an amazing LARP. And I would play somebody who is in no way, in no way similar to me. Um, and this is fantastic because in a LARP I can live on a planet which only has women on it. Or I can be an American gay man in 1980s New York. Or I can be an 80-year-old wizard professor at the Magic University. And uh, this is one wonderful thing about LARP. So when this fader is at the max, differentiation it says as different as possible, playing someone from yourself can be deeply exciting and fun and interesting. That's one of the best things with doing it as different as possible. And it supports escapism. I get to escape from my real life because it's nothing like my real life. On the other hand, this is hard because if it's too different, maybe I'm playing an immortal character. I don't actually know much about what it's like to be 2,000 years old. So maybe it makes it harder to really feel the feelings of the, of the character. And of course, total differentiation is an illusion. Um, we're always bringing something of ourselves into the LARP. As close to home as possible is, is a good thing because the player's background will always give a more complete person. Like my life, I have so many experiences to put into the character, much more than I can get in a character description, for instance. Um, but the question, of course, if there's no fictional c character, is it even LARP? And if the players have a very strong reaction to your game because they're playing very close to home, are you prepared to deal with it? 
Are we? I don't know. Maybe you might be, so it might be a good idea. But of course, usually most of the games are somewhere in the middle. The player uh, brings, fills in some of the things of their experience uh, anyway, and you can also do this in a structured manner. You can say, bring some of your experience into this LARP. And my final slide is this observation. Of course, this is only relevant if you create in some way the characters in this LARP. If the players if you decide that actually you want the players to create the characters totally on their own without any kind of structured input from you, then you have no control over this fader. They may decide to bleed in a lot or they may, may decide to do the very opposite. But that's a completely different fader that we're going to talk about a little bit later today. Thank you. Thank you.